All right, in this video, we'll be looking at um, some additional cell structures and functions. Nothing new from the last video. We're just going to be kind of adding some ideas from our previous uh, lecture. And so the first thing we're going to look at are vacuoles. And again, we talked about how vacuoles have a storage and release kind of function. Um, and in plants, they particularly are there to store water. Plants will have a large central vacuole seen in their cells, as you can see from the picture here, and they can also be used to release waste. Um, plants will retain water for something called turgor pressure, and what that does is it essentially forces the water to the outside of the cell wall. Um, the way to think of this is like um, when you when you fill like a Ziploc bag of water, what happens to the bag? Well, it, it kind of swells and it swells to the size of the bag and the sides of the bag kind of push out. And so you can imagine plant cells doing this same sort of thing. This is a good thing for a plant because it gives the plant structure. Uh, when a plant has good water in it, you can see there on the left, uh, the plant is able to put its leaves up to the sun, which is going to allow for photosynthesis, which is going to allow for plant growth. If there's no water, then those vacuoles will shrink. The cells then will shrink just like that Ziploc bag would shrink as the water got drained out of it, which would cause the plant to wilt. And so this would not be good. And so plants use water not only for cellular processes and that sort of thing, but also just to give structure for the plant. Another um, thing that we'll look at here is um, lysosomes and talking about how lysosomes digest materials. We alluded to this a little bit in the last video. Um, so there's a process called phagocytosis where the cell will take in large food particles. Uh, think when you think food particles, think large portions of macromolecules, right? Like carbohydrates, nucleic acids, proteins, lipids. And then the vacuole's purpose then is to take and break those down into their basic parts. They can then move into the other parts of the cells for use. For instance, the mitochondria will take those, those energy-bearing molecules and um, basically break them down further so that ATP can be created. Another function of lysosomes that is um, not as commonly um, known is that the lysosome actually can function for programmed cell death as well because uh, cells have a particular lifespan and once that lifespan has spent, maybe the cell's efficiency is way down and because it's just an older cell, then the cell will go through something called apoptosis, which is essentially program cell death and the lysosomes will function to uh, you know they'll open up inside the cell and basically kill the cell from the inside calling causing it to kind of disintegrate from within and so this is another function that lysosomes can serve and so a little bit about the ER we'll talk more about this as we go to but the ER serves several functions um, intracellular transport is one of those functions it works together with the golgi we kind of talked about those two things separately but in the rough er those proteins are made because the ribosomes are there they're going to be folded up in the er they're going to be transferred to the golgi via a little vesicle a vesicle is just a, um, a temporary storage sac that can travel in the cell that little vesicle you can see here is going to go into the golgi and the golgi is going to modify those that cell and then or modify that protein and then it's going to ship that protein out into the external environment so let's talk a little bit more about chloroplasts and mitochondria the chloroplast has several structural elements that are vital to its function. First of all, there are these tiny sacs called thylakoids all throughout the chloroplast. You can see them. They look like stacked up Mentos inside. This one almost looks like green Oreos or something, the way that it's the way that it looks. And so the thylakoid are organized in these stacks called granum. Each stack is called a granum. 
a plural would be called grana. And this is another way to increase surface area so that there can be a lot of these reactions occurring. The, the main reaction that's going on inside the, or one of the main reactions going on inside the chloroplast takes place in the thylakoid membrane. And as you can see, there's a lot of thylakoid membrane there. Um, that thylakoid membrane is where the chlorophyll is found, which is the green pigment found in plants. And it's made up of these photosystems that basically take on, you know, absorb the sunlight and then uh, power electrons to create sugar. This is where these the light dependent reactions occur that are located inside the chloroplast. Well, also in the stroma, which you can see there, the stroma is the fluid inside the uh, chloroplast, and inside the stroma is where carbon fixation occurs. Uh, sometimes you'll call this process the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction, but carbon fixation is basically taking unusable carbon in the form of CO2 and making it into a usable product, which is glucose. So uh, animals, you know, plants obviously can use their own glucose, but animals can eat plants to have that. Or you can, an animal can eat another animal that has eaten plants. And so that's how that energy transfer takes place. And you can see this picture here of the, uh, the overall processes of the chloroplast. You see the light dependent reactions occurring in the Calvin cycle. And those two things are occur in tandem. We will have an entire unit that we will go over that in more detail, but for this purpose, to just mention them. And then here we have the mitochondria, which we talked a little bit about in the last video. Mitochondria has a double membrane. This, this provides different compartments for different kinds of reactions. It provides a higher surface area to volume ratio, which increases the efficiency of the organelle. Uh, the idea here is the mitochondria will take carbohydrates like glucose that is made in, the, in photosynthesis and will break them down uh, to make ATP. The mitochondria can also take proteins and fats and break them down as well to create ATP. This, uh, one of the processes that occurs in the mitochondria happens in the inner chamber of the mitochondria, which is called the matrix, as you can see labeled on this picture. This, is, this process is called the Krebs cycle. And in the Krebs cycle, electron transport or electron carriers are created and those electron carriers will then travel to that inner membrane, that membrane that's all folded up. And this is where electron transport takes place and ATP synthesis occurs. And so this, as we state that the main purpose of the mitochondria is to create ATP, this, there are several reactions that are happening in order to contribute to that.